The breaking news this afternoon is that Evan Gershkovitz, the Wall Street Journal reporter, has been released by Russia in a very complex prisoner release deal. He was falsely accused of spying in Russia. He was sentenced to 16 years recently. He was uh, in custody there for 491 days. He is currently in Turkey on his way home to his family. We are delighted in this building. The Wall Street Journal has released a statement there or owned by uh, the same company that owns Talk. Evan is free and on his way home, says the Wall Street Journal. He was released today in a multilateral prisoner exchange that took place in Ankara, Turkey, along with Paul Whelan and Alsu Karmasheva, amongst others. We are overwhelmed with relief and elated for Evan and his family, as well as for the others who were released. At the same time, we condemn in the strongest terms Vladimir Putin's regime in Russia, which orchestrated Evan's 491-day wrongful imprisonment based on sham accusations and a fake trial as part of an all-out assault on free press and truth. Unfortunately, many journalists remain unjustly imprisoned in Russia and around the world. Evan and his family have displayed unrivaled courage, resilience and poise during this ordeal, which came to an end because of broad advocacy for his release around the world. Specifically, we would like to thank the US government and numerous governments around the world with particular gratitude to Germany. Global news media organisations standing in solidarity with Evan, Evan's vast international network of friends and our colleagues at the Wall Street Journal, Dow Jones and News Corps who supported Evan from the first hour of his captivity. We reserve special recognition and appreciation for Evan's mother, Ella, his father, Mikhail, and his sister, Danielle, and her husband, Anthony, who have been steadfast partners throughout this unthinkable ordeal. Their unwavering strength, positivity and resolve will continue to serve as an inspiration. That is the statement from the Wall Street Journal. He is finally free. Evan Gershkovitz, our colleague, is free after 491 days. He is uh, has been the exchange took place in Ankara. He is now free out of Russian airspace on his way back to his family. Mike Graham is my fellow talk presenter. Mike, wonderful news. Yeah, fantastic, absolutely amazing. And watching um, Evan there in the uh, in the courtroom where um, the makeshift trial was going on, the sham trial, whatever you might want to call it. You know, he always looked as if he had hope. He always looked like he had a smile on his face. Even when they shaved his head, he came out and he was still smiling. You know, we all were terribly worried that this would never happen, that they would just keep hold of his his uh, uh, his presence and use it in some way uh, for polit political purposes or uh, for something else. We just didn't know. But thank goodness. I mean, you know, it just goes to show that patience uh, is indeed a virtue. And his family have been amazing. Um, you know, the, the, the news corps has been fantastic as well. And as you say, the, the American uh, government, the German government too, it just goes to show you that, uh, you know, good can triumph over evil uh, in the end. There is, uh, this is an incredibly complex prisoner deal. It involved 24 prisoners, at least six countries. They came together after months of negotiations. US government, Russian government, German government uh, involved as well. After nearly 500 days, it's really the end of this statement that, that really got me the most. We reserve spe special recognition for his family, who have been yeah. steadfast partners throughout this unthinkable ordeal. They have been through so much, as has Evan, in this 491-day uh, horrendous ordeal. You can't imagine what, it's, what it must be like to be effectively locked up um, day after day after day, you know, 491 days, it's an incredibly long time, you know, and if you ever ever wonder how long that is, people have always said to me, you know, people who have been held in hostage captivity, we've talked about people being held in Gaza uh, for the last several months because of October the 7th, and, you know, when I went to see an exhibition about it, you count first 60 seconds, then you try and count 160 seconds, then you try and count 260 seconds, you keep doing that, mm. and until you get to the stage where you've actually only counted for about half an hour. And it's incredible to think that this man, this young man uh, in the prime of his life, you know, a fantastic journalist, has been denied his own freedom, which he'll never get back. But we can only hope now that, you know, he gets reunited with his family as soon as possible. Um, and he'll probably want to, knowing the people that know him, who have spoken to me about him, he'll want to get back to work straight away. Yeah, he'll want to get yeah. back on the road and he'll want to be a journalist again. Well, that's a, a, an article, perhaps a book, uh, about what he has been through. Maybe an interview with you, Mike, on Morning Glory would be an amazing way to learn more about this. The horrendous, ridiculous, outrageous deal, uh, outrageous uh, ordeal that he has been through. And for such yeah. a long time, as you correctly say, Mike, there have been his friends, his colleagues, 
uh, you know, we, we, we occasionally criticise management in this building, but actually they have played an absolute oh, blinder. They've played a blinder with this, haven't they? <laughs> Yeah, they absolutely have. I've, I've never been known to criticise them. Of course not. Of course not. Um, but uh, but certainly, yeah. I mean, we're all terribly pleased. It's a great. It's just a great day. I mean, I don't know how much more uh, excited people can be. I mean, I feel like we should go and throw a party for him, even though he's not actually here yet. But I'm sure there'll be lots of parties being thrown um, around the world. And again, it's a good opportunity to to remember. Uh, what freedom is actually like, you know, and people, uh, and in some ways, wrongly, in my view, uh, get sort of very wound up about Russia and about Vladimir Putin and about the war in Ukraine, and they start to think about, you know, what it's like in, in this country and whether we're free. Well, let me tell you, we are free in this country, yeah. um, and this is one of the great joys that we can we can celebrate because we are free. And people in Russia are not free, I'm afraid, because you can get locked up there and you can never be seen again. And thank God that hasn't happened to Evan. Mike, thank you. Really appreciate that. And we will raise a glass. In fact, I'm going to raise a, my Diet Coke can to uh, Evan and say cheers to him on a very... It's wonderful that he is now free. We've got a statement now from the President, Joe Biden, on securing the release of Americans detained in Russia. Evan is, of course, American. Today, three American citizens and one American green card holder uh, who were unjustly imprisoned in Russia are finally coming home. Paul Whelan, Evan Gershkovitz, Alsu Surmakasheva and Vladimir Karamursa. The deal that secured their freedom, President Biden says, was a feat of diplomacy. All told, we've negotiated the release of 16 people from Russia, including five Germans and seven Russian citizens who were political prisoners in their own country. Some of these women and men have been unjustly held for years. All have endured unimaginable suffering and uncertainty. Today, President Biden says, their anger, their agony, I should say, today their agony is over. I'm grateful to our allies who stood with us throughout tough, complex negotiations to achieve this outcome, including Germany, Poland, Slovenia, Norway and Turkey. This is a powerful example of why it's vital to have friends in this world whom you can trust and depend upon. Our alliances make Americans safer. And let me be clear, says President Biden, I will not stop working until every American wrongfully detained or held hostage around the world is reunited with their family. My administration has now brought home over 70 such Amer Americans, many of whom were in captivity since before I took office. Still, too many families are suffering and separated from their loved ones, and I have no higher priority as president than bringing those Americans home. Today, President Biden says, we celebrate the return of Paul, Evan, Alsu and Vladimir and rejoice with their families. We remember all those still wrongfully detained or held hostage around the world and reaffirm our pledge to their families. We see you, we are with you and we will never stop working to bring your loved ones home where they belong.